Hi everyone welcome back to another Reddit cheating story. Before we start please hit the subscribe button and notification bell if you love to watch more cheating stories. Our marriage become worse after he work in a school and now I am the unluckiest woman alive. My soon to be ex-husband was a very attractive man and I felt like the luckiest woman alive on our first date. When we married we agreed that I would be making most of the money and doing most of the housework while he cooked me dinner and completed his bachelor's degree. At least that was the plan. He flunked class after class because he refused to do the work and skipped class in favor of playing video games and complaining about how depressed he was. Pre-marriage he was charming and attentive during our dates. Post-marriage he was off in his own world and getting him to agree to date night was like pulling teeth. The sex became infrequent after the honeymoon and stopped altogether after a year and a half. You see, he liked chubby girls and at 120 pounds I literally wasn't enough for him. My weight or lack thereof hadn't been a problem for the sex we had before marriage but after marriage suddenly the pressure was on for me to gain weight. For every woman entering a marriage hoping to change her man into something he's not there is a man doing the same to his new wife. I could not discuss this with my female friends. There are no words in our society to describe a woman trapped in a sexless marriage. I was probably the only late 20-something woman in my entire state who had to beg her husband for sex. So from the beginning my marriage was plagued by a problem that had no name. I had always thought, perhaps naively, that marriage was supposed to resolve sexual tension, not create it. I did not get married to never have sex again. The homemade dinners dropped from every day to once a week because he was depressed. He also stopped accompanying me to family and social events. Again I did not get married to show up alone to events. But I was patient. I convinced myself that his mental illness was the problem, not our marriage. I hid any pills that might be dangerous when he talked about committing suicide. I came home from work each day praying I would not find my husband dead. When he said he was going to walk out our front door and not stop until he died I blocked the door with my body and called 911. I ended up canceling the 911 call after I got him to promise me he would not hurt himself while I was at work. My handle on this forum comes from the fact that our life together was like a soap opera, an endless emotional roller coaster. I never knew if he was going to ask me for cuddles or yell at me. I walked on eggshells. One time I was washing dishes, minding my own business, and he burst into the kitchen yelling, I'm going to become an astronaut and if you don't support my dream I'm cutting you out of my life. He was 28 and still didn't have his bachelor's degree so I was pretty sure being an astronaut was not in his future but after that outburst I didn't say anything. I finally convinced him to seek professional help. The worst behaviors were no longer present but we never did regain the connection we had before we were married. At that point I did not feel like a wife but like a mother to a moody teenager. His mood swings went beyond just normal bipolar disorder. He didn't want a wife, he wanted a mother substitute without the parental authority. The fact that his own mother left him with relatives in a foreign country at the age of 14 might have had something to do with it. The end of my marriage did not come when I discovered the sexually explicit text to one of his community college students, he had by this point found work as a part-time tutor. It did not come when, a few months later, he announced his intention to leave me for yet another woman who, ironically, turned him down once he was free. No, my marriage ended the moment when I heard him come in the front door and thought, oh CRP, he's home. That moment came long before I had any inkling of his affairs. In a way it was a relief to discover the text because it gave me an excuse for divorce. I had grown up in a traditional household where divorce was very much frowned upon. So much so that I forgave him and resolved to work on our marriage after I confronted him about the texts. Ultimately he left me for the other woman. So there it is. I supported this man financially and emotionally for years, only to have him turn on me when he thought the grass was greener on the other side. He even asked me to buy him a flat screen TV as a parting gift before you could say gold digger. I told him my parting gift to him was not emulating Lorena Bobbitt after I found out about the cheating. He also asked me if I would mind vacating the condo whose bills I paid solely out of my own money whenever he wanted romantic evenings with his mistress. I told him to boil his head, take a long walk off a short pier, and then go f himself. Some people's heads are so far up their own asses. Slowly my self-respect was returning. 
I never realized how much I gave into him and how much of myself I had lost in the process until I had nothing more to lose. Owing to some unusual legal circumstances he got our home but it was 100% worth it to be free again. My traditional upbringing failed me utterly. When this COVID-19 business is over I intend to stick to escorts. At least they will actually do the job they are being paid to do, not expect me to wait on them hand and foot after putting in a full day's work, and be honest about the fact that they are seeing other women. Best of all they will have no power to strip me of my home and half my assets. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell.